Now, I, I think that's a good, that's a great title right there. Because we live in a day and time, anybody that comes into my hotel room, they see gadgets, devices. Everything's plugged into some sort of power. You know, I've been on airplanes galore over the last couple of months, and one of the first things we look for is does it have an input, you know, where you can plug into the power. Yes. The last thing you want, the last thing I want, is that if I'm on an eight-hour flight, a six-hour flight, a two-hour flight, for that matter, my power, the power goes up. You know, can't listen to the music, can't play my game. What in the world am I going to do? And so we can take that natural inclination to want to be powered up, bring it into the more important realm of the kingdom, and understand this, we've got to be powered up. Now, we can say that, but more important than we've got to be powered up, we've got to be plugged into the right power. All right, and let's not fool ourselves, even inside of the house of God, if you plug into the wrong power in the house, you're going to be in trouble. And so we want to make sure that we are focused and we understand. Plugging into the power, what power? How do I monitor if I'm draining? How do I monitor if I need to be uh, uh, empowered all the more? So we're going to travel. We're going to stick with a familiar fella in the Bible, uh, the Apostle Paul. He went from Saul to Paul, and I'm going to use the backdrop of his life to describe what can happen concerning power. Everybody wants power. I'm telling you, and according to the news, I'm not going to mention anything. Some people will do anything for power. <laughs> I thought you would get that whole thing. Amen. And so we're going to start with um, a portion of text right there. And it starts as the backdrop. So let's let's get a picture of what we're dealing with. Ephesians uh, 3, 14 through 21. Here begins the reading of God's holy word. It reads, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he will grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and the length and the depth and the height, and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now I'm to hear. Hey, after all of that, Jesus, that's a preacher member, I'll keep on touching. After all of that, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we could we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Amen. That's power. You should have found something right there. The writer of this above is none other than the Apostle Paul. If there was ever a man in the Bible who knew about power, it was he. Let's recall, because we've got to understand, this man had so much power as soul. What is God saying about earthly power compared to his power? And so with that in mind, Understanding that Saul had a lot of power. Let's look at Acts 8, 1 through 3. Now picture, you got a picture of the word in here. Look at it. And Saul was consenting unto his death. Yeah, all right, at Stephen's death. And at the time, there was great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. Now, as for Saul, he made havoc. Lord, have mercy. He made havoc of the church. Entering, look at this now, entering into every house and calling men and women, committed them to prison. That's power folks. That means, you know, let's, let's, let's not take it lightly. He had government 
governmental power. He had authority in this earth realm. You know, I watch a lot of old shows that date back to A.D. And when Rome was the, Rome was the world. Mm -hmm. That's where you got a saying, all roads lead to Rome, mm -hmm. which means it's, it, it's the only place that mattered because it was the world at that time. Mm -hmm. So given that Rome was the world at that time, here we have Saul who has been given power by Rome. Mm -hmm. In other words, Saul had all power. There was no earthly authority from whom he could attain any greater amount of power. What he said, based on his authority, went. And so Saul, he knew about it, governmental power, earthly power. Saul depended on this power in his daily life. With this power, you can imagine Saul thought he was powerful. I mean, you know, it, it, it's a political thing, folks. When, when you have permission from whoever the number one is, you'd be a Jew. I mean, you, you would just be somebody. I'm just trying to, you know, just, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to behave myself in America. I want to come back. But you would have people under number one who think they could do anything because number one said so. <laughs> but can I tell you that unless you're number one, it's God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Then you do not have permission to do anything and everything you want to do. Right. But here we have Paul. We're talking about power. We're talking about plugging into power. He has all power. That's his mindset, right? When he read to the master, all power. God have mercy. I'm all right. Yet one day, his power meets up with the power. <laughs> My Lord, going about ready to do more damage <laughs> to the Christian church, going about trying to prove that Rome, the political powerhouse of the day, has all power and authority. He's got ladders, he's got papers, he has permission, he probably has some Roman seal, he can do what he is not to be questioned. Mm -hmm. Yet there is a power that will question you when you think that you are unquestionable. Yeah. See, that's a dangerous place right there. Mm -hmm. So Acts 9 and 3, it says, here we go, here's a, just a moment. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus. And suddenly, there shined round about him a light from heaven. Now let's have a discussion for a moment. Question for you. Let's see what you're going to say. When Saul began on the road to Damascus, how was he feeling? Come on. He began. Confident. What happened? What happened? How was Saul feeling when he began? Powerful. Powerful, yes. Unstoppable. In charge. In charge, that's right. Large and in charge. Right, right. Yeah. Large. And, and they said that his, actually, his physique, he was a very petite man. And so, therefore, in spite of his maybe petite physique, he felt all-powerful. He felt large. Mankind seek, now listen to this, mankind seek power to become enlarged. Mm -hmm. Now, just as an aside, because this isn't in my notes, my prayer is that the church will understand that because we are connected to the power, uh -huh. that we are larger than any power. Why must we ever drop our standards? Why must we accept everything and anything? That's because the church gave away her power. So political power. They didn't understand that we had the ultimate power. And so you're right. You've named uh, some that I did. Confident, unbeatable, unstoppable. Empowered, big, fearless, stately. All of these terms are an indication of power. Yet this man's soul had now met up with a power bigger than himself. Mm -hmm. That's my PowerPoint number one. Look at this, y'all. There will always be a power that is bigger than your power. 
Come on, did you get that? <laughs> Do you know throughout history, you can think of Napoleon, you can think of Hitler, you can think of any modern day people you want to think of, you can think of whomever you want. Whoever that person is, even in the church realm, they think they have all power. Yet there is always someone who is able to defeat their power. The last thing, I hope you can get this real good. The last thing that we as individual Christians want to ever think is that even because we are Christians, we have we're, we're all powerful. No, 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 no. We are powerful because of the power of God that is resident with us. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And so we must constantly teach and train, especially the millennials and the children. They feel so empowered through technology, empowered through uh, uh, social media, empowered that they lean to that understanding, not understanding that they are becoming weaker. Because except whatever you do, be plugged into the right power, you're not powerful at all. You're full of something, but it's not powerful. Okay? So let's understand why this moment is necessary. This moment is necessary because of what I call a mirror effect. I want to talk about that. The mirror effect. But it's a little bit different than what we're used to. Usually, the mirror, you see yourself. And people stop there. You know, the power's in that mirror. I gotta fix me. I gotta make sure I'm looking a certain way. Um, am I ready to meet the day? Is the hair in the right style? You know, you know what we do, especially women. You know, uh, uh, we got it all together. And so we look in the mirror, and that moment becomes a power moment because it's preparation for the day. Yes. Yet I want to encourage you to, to do something different. Listen to this. A mirror shines back or reflects an image back to you because of the power of light. You know, if you don't have light, you can't see yourself. A mirror. If you are going to become your next best self, you must be able to look in the mirror, here it is, and see beyond where you are now and who you are now. In other words, when I look at the mirror, I've got to see more than what I see. I've got to see more than being ready for this moment or even this day. As it were, I've got to be able to look beyond the mirror image because that mirror image is all about me. Really, it really is. It's about me. And I've got to look beyond over my shoulders and say that this moment is a moment that's bigger than this moment. Who knows who I might connect with today that will aid my future in the next five years? Who knows who God's going to bring in my pathway so that I have more knowledge in order to become a better person for years to come? And so we've got to be careful. I mean, you, you're on Facebook. You know it's all about the selfie. Uh, the power is in the selfie. The power is in how many likes can I get for this self? Yeah. See, when I, I'm studying this, I'm going, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the enemy always wants us to stop at this image. Why are we going to stop at an image which one day is going to fade away? Why are we going to stop and put all power and trust in what I see? When I see me, when I understand that should I live another 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, this image is going to change a bit. You all have changed a bit in the last 40 years, 30 years. Exactly. It will change, but watch this, sis. The inner man of who I am only gets stronger, only becomes more beautiful. So isn't it a trick of the enemy to have us to focus on this? Hmm? Yeah, it is. I'm talking about it a little bit more. <laughs> Anybody that knows me, I am not against technology. Trust in me. All right. Here's PowerPoint number two. The power that confronts you is the same power that will conform you to his image. Let me talk about it. Saul is on the, yep, Saul is on the road to Damascus. He is full of himself. 
himself. He is the best, most powerful himself that he can be. He, he doesn't need to be fixed in his, in his own sight. But he is confronted by a power. And that power, the power of God that he was coming against, is the very power that was going to take him to his next self. As so, his life would have been a story and have an end. As Paul, his life continues to impact churches today. Come on, do you hear me? And so even though he was stopped and confronted by a power, let me go to the title, because he plugged into it, he experienced more power than he thought he had ever had. It took him to another level. That's what being confronted by the right power will do. Sometimes when somebody in your younger years, I would say, because it usually happens with younger people, you're usually trying to correct a person younger than yourself, and they get the back up, they don't realize you're trying to empower them yeah. because you've been through something. Yeah. You know a little something. Mm -hmm. You're trying to save them from some experiences that you had. Yeah. And if they were only, my God, can you imagine if, if the young people, if the teens, if the young adults, if the millennials, if they took a spiritual plug and just plugged into some of you, you know, and I hear it at home. Oh, you don't know what we're going through. Oh, this is a different day, a different time. That's the same thing I said when I was that age. Every generation will always say that. But I tell you what, I learned real early in life to go to prayer meeting. 16 years old, I then started going to prayer meeting with the mothers in Zion. Didn't know how to pray, didn't know how to kneel like that, didn't know how to grind before God. But because I plugged into that power, I'm a bad mama jamma today. <laughs> it's not of my own power, but it's because I plugged into the power. And it made me in that power, not of my own, someone who can absolutely stand against the wiles of the devil. And so many times when they are rejecting you, they don't understand that confronting and there being a confrontation is actually to make them stronger. You know, you can't just keep on giving in to them. We don't want to. Be sure. This is what we... How, how they get to know all the answers to how church should be run? <laughs> when they've only been around. So we've got to stand up within our own power and actually understand God wants us to set a standard. And this is what he does with the apostle Paul. Saul is confronted by a power that now will empower him to become his best self. So let me warn you, this is why it does matter who you yield to. I, I, I'm hoping that in front of me, I have, watch this, trustworthy power sources. Which means that other people, younger people preferably, will be able to plug into you safely. Safely. Amen. That they're going to hear words of wisdom. They're going to hear words that challenge them, but understand that they can be better tomorrow than who they are today. Amen. Who you uh, become will be dependent upon the powers that be in your life. You know, maybe, maybe I, young people need to hear such sessions like this. Yeah, I got seasoned wise women, and you're agreeing with me, saying, yeah, you're right, we've been there, we, we know that preacher. Mm -hmm. What we really need is some teenagers in here. Mm -hmm. Just sit down and listen. Yeah. And then, when you're doing the, mm, yeah, <laughs> they need to hear that. That's a, that's a wise, mm, ah, yeah. <laughs> so here's an activity for you. List five people who are most often a part of your circle. You know, listen or think about it. I'm going to give you like 30 seconds. You should know you, you hang with it. So who, who are those most five, those five people, three to five people that you always are wrong? <laughs> you know, you have your ace, boom, boom, all that 
back of stock, the best girl, the little posse, the BFF, all that type of stuff. I, I, I don't know why we use this phrase. I'm probably gonna hurt somebody right here. Ride or die. I ain't dying. No, no. My ride or die. I'm like, why do you use such terminology? No, 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 no. Our words are important, you know. So, you know, think about those people. Now, Aside from that list, take 30 seconds, think about or write down, who are the five people you most admire in the universe? Who are the five people you most admire in the universe? Yeah? So you can you pick a group of people, and then you admire a particular group of people. Now, let me say something here. I certainly hope that the people that you hang with, you can actually have money. Mm -hmm. If your five people are nothing like these five people, you're around the wrong five people. <laughs> because you, you admire these people for a reason. So you should be surrounded by people who demonstrate the characteristics of those people that you admire. These are the people you plug into, who you call, who you call for prayer. How are you calling somebody for prayer that need prayer themselves? Well. How are you calling for prayer for people who really don't know what intercession is? See, you got to be careful. You know, listen, don't ever think in the church everything is equal rights. The only thing that's equal rights is the right to accept Jesus Christ. Other than that, you have to labor. You have to study. You know, go up and say, are you righteous? Ain't there equal rights? That's what the world wants you to do, saying you lower the standard. So everybody can be the same. You said it. So listen. It is my belief that these choices empower you for good or bad. You know, no time must be rich. I am now, so you're an older timer. <laughs> you used to say, show me your company and I'll show you. Yeah. Birds of a feather. Yeah. All they were saying is, what are you plug into? What's their power? Now that Saul has become Paul, he has the need for power to be able to complete the task in his life. Watch this. Here's a statement. Wrong power. Wrong path. Right power, right path. The reason so many go wrong, you can't even blame them at one point. They were set on the wrong path. How you expect scholars and intellects and fearlessness when they come from a home where nobody ran, nobody prayed, nobody spoke about the news, what was going on, but you want the child to be. You can't, even in this age of modern technology, sit the child in front of an iPad all day. That's right. And then say he, and then he gets in school, and the teacher says, he doesn't seem to get along with children. <laughs> he doesn't play fair. She doesn't compliment. It's always a fuss on the playground. Because you never introduce the child to other children or other people. That's right. That's right. You see? And, and so we're going to train from young. Yes. What is the power? I was very careful about who was around the children from babies. Mm -hmm. What type of sound they were around. My, they didn't go anywhere. My home, quiet, classical music. I'm a biologist. I know that I'm training the brain. I know that there are neurons in the brain. Come on, I got some medical people. And the neurotransmitters. And the synapses that gap, I gotta make sure that the right pathways are being formed before they're two, so that they can sit in a class now and understand some things. And so I'm, I'm good at it. I got three college graduates. My youngest one getting her first degree at 17, the youngest in Bermuda to get a degree, an a 
associate's degree. A student in high school got a college degree. It's not because I was brilliant. I just knew. Examine the child. See what the tendency is. Now expose him to that. And it's the same thing God did with Saul. He examined him because he knew him anyway. Come on. He, he, he knitted he knitted Saul in his mother's womb. I don't care how rebellious he came out. I don't care how rebellious he ended up being. God said, I, I knew you, Saul. I had a plan for you. You got to have be powerful. But one day you're going to have a road to Damascus experience. And the real power that I knitted in you will come forth. So we got to be careful. I, I, tend, I don't look at the child first. I look at the parents. <laughs> You had the parent teacher meeting. The parent can't keep still. The parent want to hit the child. I said, Yeah, you've been training them and disciplining the child at home. So now you want to pretend to do it in public. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> Talking about the Apostle Paul walking in his God designed destiny, Paul now becomes a missionary and established many churches. How did he go from killing Christians, persecuting, to forming churches? Sometimes, here's the Lord, here's the Lord. Sometimes the young people fight against the most what they're actually born to do. Think about it. Think about that. Now, list if you can remember any or think about any of the drama that Paul went through. He's good for being Saul. He's now Paul. You think that, you know, once he crossed over to Christianity, everything was just going to be good? No. You wouldn't have any trouble because you're hooked into the power now. Right? But that's not so. Anybody can tell me something he went through as the apostle? What's something negative he went through? He was in prison. Come on, you know who. Paul was sickly, had a lot of health issues. I heard somebody, he was in prison, not just one time. So here, this is important, he now is plugged into the right power, but he experiences such dramatic situations. So here's the thought. The power is not so that you can float through Christianity with ease. The power is so that when you go through stuff as a Christian, you can still come out with more power. God have mercy. I can tell you from this personal experience, if there's ever one thing that I would not want to happen, it happened. Yet, I cannot say that I'm a child of God and a pastor at that and not believe that even through this thing, that God still doesn't talk to me. He still doesn't empower me. He still doesn't give me creativity. He still doesn't cause me to do his work. It's his work. Yeah. And if the Holy Spirit is within you, no matter what you're going through, he'll take you through. Yeah. And he'll show up in you. Yeah. That's why we've got to be plugged into the right power source. If I had girlfriends, Christian friends, pastor friends, and that's where it stopped, and they were the ones that empowered me, I would be in some sort of trouble. Now, don't say, and I'm not saying that I don't need those folks. That's good. God, God supplies people. Yet, we all understand all power is from God. Okay? Now, PowerPoint number three. I think I've got three or four of Here we go. On your journey of purpose, you will experience many things which will drain the battery of your life. Oh, Lord. Can I get a witness? <laughs> now, the key for Paul and the key for you and me is that while we're going through what you're going through, that you remain plugged into the right power source. So now let's take a look at Paul's experiences and parallel them with ours. Question for you. What are some things that can drain you of your power, your authority, your strength? Talk to me. What, can, what, what in your life, throughout your life, throughout life, what drains you? Your own job. 
Some of you are <laughs> celebrating around 1 o'clock that it was Friday and 5 o'clock was coming. You had a prophetic celebration. <laughs> what else for your life? What, what has drained you in the past? Your job, children, children, children. husband, <laughs> husband, let me husband, husband, yeah. Huh? Friends, Friends. Yeah. family members, yeah. illness. All right, let's, let's see here. You're pretty much getting You're giving more, right? The busyness of life, frustrations, disappointments. All this happens. Let's not be so heaven bound that we don't realize we are earth right now. And that Christians do not get a pass when it comes to the struggles. And we cannot, see you raise weak people. They ain't got no power. And soon as somebody talks at them, somebody didn't say hi, somebody looked at them wrong, they stay away from church. They take their seat back ten rest. What kind of power do you got? Well, what in the world? But if you come into the house of God, knowing that you're plugged into the Holy Ghost, knowing that you're plugged into the very authority of heaven, then no matter if he or she or they or whatever happens in the church, you come with your, your face is set like a flint. I come into the house to praise God. He's kept me another week. Kept me with my sound mind. Kept me strong. And thank God he's kept me desiring to be with him. And that's how you have power. I keep on saying, my people know, should we know such thing as a grumpy Christian? Christian. Why are you being a grumpy Christian? Not only do you have life, but you have it in eternity. Huh? Not, you can be a moderately poor, a poor, a middle income. What are all that? It's going to disappear one day. All of that. At the max, you're going to have 120. I'm trying to be good. 120 years. Compare 120 with eternity. Hello, 120, eternity. I would rather be fit for eternity than fit for this world. That's, that, that, that's young people. They become fascinated with every upgrade in the world. And so here we have, this is what happens in life. What happens is, we become drained. The battery of our life, it happens. Sometimes it's not one thing or two things. It's like a bunch of things. You ever had a bunch of things happen? Like, hold up, God. Like, I can take one thing at a time. But this thing about three and four things happening? And what happens is it drains us. That's when we become completely drained. It can happen. This is where you're going to walk in faith. Because though you may become drained, you're never meant to stay there. You're never meant to stay there. To stay drained, you will be calling God a liar that he said that he will raise you up. Said that he will keep you during all seasons in your life. Saying that he will be your shield, your fortress, your buckler. These are the times when it's tested. When your battery is full, you don't seem like you don't need help. You are the help. But when your battery gets drained, that's when, oh, all of a sudden, you need help. Let's take a look here at Deacon Essence. This is not what I want to spend. Like, how much time I got? How many? Susie. Call that after what? Oh, you got 15 minutes. 15 minutes? I need 550 minutes. All right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut. I'm going I'm to go fast. So now we're going to look at life in the 21st century of social media. This is a different vibe, y'all. This is a different... Some of you that are more seasoned than myself, you just be glad you're not on social media. It's crazy. Anyway, so, understand that in the era where your life is magnified, that's what social media does. It makes you big. I need you to keep that in mind. People get on social media, all of a sudden they're big. All right? Today, not only is your life possibly open to your family, but probably open to the world. This means that the charge of on your life, the charge divinely attributed to your life, drains even faster than normal. How many people are attached to one person on Facebook? How much drainage can happen? 
talk about, talk about. When I was preparing this lesson, what came to my mind was this universal adapter. And I have a couple here. You know universal adapter. You know, when I travel, you know, Israel, you go to Germany, Kenya, we're going the next month, the fourth time we're going. You know, I am go all sorts. I'm probably going eight of them in the house. Just buy them. Just, just in case, buy another one. You might use it. <laughs> now, watch this. Listen, listen. I go from Bermuda, you know, come somewhere in America or whatever. And then I got to get to Kenya. Now, the way that I plug things in in Bermuda or America, I can't plug them in the same way. That's right. I have the same device with the same potential of power, but unless I plug it in to the power source, the power remains in the technology. If I want to use it, I now have to make an adaptation. I have to adapt according to the country that I'm in. And it's the same way in the kingdom. There are times that you have power, but you've got to know how do I use it in this situation. Uh, it's a different situation. I'm dealing with a different kind of people. Uh, it's a strange atmosphere. And so you've got to see, you can't just do what you always do. Listen, family. You know family can be different. You're coming up to you. Thanksgiving, Christmas season, right? All year long, you can eat dinner at your table a certain way and have peace and all that. You get, you get with your family members, you're going to adapt. You're going to have to adapt. Because auntie so-and-so, she's going to say the fork shouldn't be there. And how, what, what sense that make? How you been cooking? This don't taste like it. All of a sudden, you're going to have to adapt. You and your sanctified self. You're going to have to hold your tongue. Or you seniors, you go to your younger people, you know, why they have everybody at your house? Mm -hmm. and, and everybody is on technology, you're at the table by yourself. <laughs> you. Adapting is important. You can have the power, but unless you learn how to accommodate in a different situation, you're going to experience some trouble. I'm going to go fast. So the point of this adapter is that no matter what place you are at, you can get to the power of your electronic devices. Power point number four, the last power point. Mm. You must disconnect from what charges you in order to connect to what will charge you. Mm. Mm. Yeah. 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 Huh? Yeah. Lord have mercy. That's what makes those five people important. Yeah. More important than any person, that's what makes this important that I know who I am in Christ Jesus so that when those times come when nobody may be able to help me charge up I can go straight to my father that's what the scripture text refers to okay and so I have a question here what are those things which can disconnect you from God and then you know there are many things and, and I know that you know that I want to talk about, in particular, social media. The dangers of social media to the spiritual model of the child of God. I'm going to teach so fast, but I'm going to hit on these three points. False people, from my social media. False people, false pulpit, false power. You know, we've got to be pretty, we've got to start thinking as a church. We shouldn't be a lazy people. We've got to understand that the devil, do you all still say the devil? You know the devil free. The devil has to prepare his church. And his greatest platform is social media, is electronics. Because he's got to get to enough people. For God so loved the world, well, he can't stand the world. And so he's got to go to the world stage, which is social media. One, false people. I'm often amused by the term Facebook friends. I let just Facebook friends. That's what they call them. Now, I have approximately 4,200 of them. Big numbers. <laughs> Big numbers. Most I don't know. Most don't know me. Many disagree with me and try to hijack my Facebook page. But the so-called friends, 
I had one incident where actually I was told that um, I had a Facebook friend who had kind of been acting strange and threatened to have a protest in Bermuda. Mm -hmm. So since they were a Facebook friend of mine, and I'm a very good preacher in Bermuda against homosexuality, they started monitoring me because they wanted to see who was going to react to what I was going to say so that the police could monitor me. That's how Facebook, Facebook. Mm -hmm. It's just amazing. So understand this. As Christians, we must realize that the only avenue the devil can get us by is people. If people didn't exist, we'd be all right. <laughs> the Garden of Eden was fine, but it was just Adam. Eve stepped in, and, and Satan said, Ah, I can get Adam. No, I couldn't get him. Now that it's unfocused because of that female, we were going to work with him. No. Let me be the first to admit, I'm not going really to I spent a good amount of time on Facebook. I have to. I call me the Facebook police pastor. I got to see what my people are up to. Yet I am very strategic on how I use Facebook. Let me be clear. I use Facebook. I don't let Facebook use me. There is a difference. You must not give your power over to a tech company. That you allow to invade your personal space. You know, I'm not going to put up my personal business. That's empowerment. Even with what the family is going through, I'm not putting out a single thing up there that's, that's not their business. It's personal. But listen to this. I understand why young people put it there, though. Because if you don't have a family that you feel you love and loves you, then you want the world to become your family. I want us to understand how break, a breakdown in family relationships has made places like Facebook, Facebook friends, so powerful. Yeah, they're looking for love. They're looking for attention. They want love. They want likes. How many likes, how many um, views do my posts get when they're videos? Okay? So I personally post around church activities. I post around social media issues impacting the island of Bermuda. Over the years, I've learned how to defame and not defame, considering that the message of the gospel is an offense to me. Let's understand that. Oh, the folks, if you don't know, don't worry about it, you don't need to be on there. The word of God, you already know, is an offense. You know, we got in a taxi today. As soon as we opened the door, we smell cigarettes. We said, um, huh? Are we getting something off for this? Yo, yo putting us a second hand smoke? Are you killing your ass? I've been smoking for 40 years. I said, well, as a biologist, you're killing yourself. They're killing me. But I spoke it, hopefully, to just plant a little seed. That what others expose themselves to. I don't want that hidden me. And that's what Facebook has become a battlefield. Many seemingly have a closer and more jovial relationship with Facebook family and friends than the real family. Mm -hmm. You can get lost in the people power of Facebook. False pulpits. I have noticed that every person is a spiritual or professional pastor or prophet on Facebook. Mm -hmm. You know, back in the day, they would have never made it. But right. Facebook provides for them a false, this I'm talking about power, a false power. Everybody gives a, gives a bit of advice all of a sudden the spiritual. They ain't spiritual. You got a lot of people got Facebook pulpits. What church they go to? Who covers them? Where they tithe and give their talent to the church? No, no, no. They got a false pulpit on Facebook. And I'm trying to tell us so that we are aware, take this information, that our children, our teens, our young adults are being empowered by false Profits on Facebook. As soon as somebody calls, says, my, Oh, I feel the Lord's anointing upon you. You gotta be careful. Alright, moving quickly. Let me take you to press, press Facebook post app. Genesis 3 and 1. This is the first one. Press Facebook. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord had made, and he said, 
said unto the woman, Yeah, yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. The serpent appeared before the face of Eve and caused her to look at him rather than towards God. And that's what happens a lot on social media, Instagram. Twitter, Facebook itself, the most massive. People want to distract, look at me. <laughs> We've got so much falseness. Okay, I heard somebody here, so I'm just going to look away. You know? I've never seen so much false hair and false eyes and false everything else. <laughs> and I'm not against it, but it's being advertised for to empower people because without that false, without that false, they don't like who they see. But they can become somebody else through all the flaws. So what I'm trying to emphasize here, we're plugging into a power, it's a false power. Many of the young people. Oh, these are some things that are being normalized on Facebook. Let me see if I can get you there. I hope I put it. Yes, look at this. Look at it, Joel. This has, you never would have normalized this 30 and 40 years ago. Suicide is being normalized. Oh, see, some of you, because you're not on Facebook, don't go there, I'm telling you, don't go there. Because you're not on Facebook, you don't see it, but you see the effects of it. Because you see what they call bipolarism and depression. Because they believe in Facebook fools. <laughs> suicide is being normalized. Because famous people and famous preachers commit suicide. We now want to make it right. Right? Famous people, famous preachers, preachers commit suicide. It does not mean that God has changed his mind about the taking of a life. Another life or your own life. Abortion. Taking life. Homosexuality taking life. You're like, preacher. How is homosexuality taking life? But if you put man, two men together, can they create life? <laughs> so they can. So life is taken. Where that male was born so that he may find a wife and procreate. That has now been taken away. See, 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 see. You got to understand what's happening. The devil is constantly putting out there ways to take life, to take out the power. One minute, what in the world? Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, we're going to do this. Last one, false power. Okay, we'll talk about voltage. I'm going to quickly say this. Do me a favor, hang these out, you guys. Because you, you can read the rest of it. So here's what I want. Hand that out. And when I tell you, you're going to put them in your ears. Or one ear. You'll block one ear with one finger and put me in the plug when I tell you. Okay. We're talking about plugging into the power. Plug into the power. When I tell you, okay, I'm going to talk at a certain level. And then, well, you know what's going to happen, but it's something going to be you do. You'll put your one finger in one ear, and then put the plug in the other. Go ahead, do it. I sound different. You can't hear me as well as you did before. You, you can't hear me as well as you did before. I'm, I'm muffled. The sound is not as sharp. Am I right? Yeah? You have to make more of an effort to listen. You have to concentrate more to hear what I'm saying. All right, take your, take your ears out. In order to be plugged into the power of God, you have to, in one sense, put an air plug in to block out the wrong noise. Amen. Muffle the sound of distractors. Muffle the words of those that are trying to disempower you. You have to know how to be in a crowd and not listen to them. True. Amen. And here's the other thing. When you put earplugs in, you concentrate more on what you, watch this, want to hear. That's right. So spiritually, we need to go around with earplugs in and say, God, I want to hear you. Amen. About everything else. Yeah. About all the noise, all the distractions, I want to hear you. Yeah. And so, these questions
attachments, you can read them in your booklet, go over them, or statements. They say, quiet the regular voice around you. Quit the negatives around you. Quench the fiery darts of the enemy. Quarantine yourself. Don't be afraid to be alone. Amen. Question anyone that comes against the word of God. What? Amen. What? Amen. Sin is somebody. A long time ago, I just wanted a lot of Facebook friends. Today, any time they come against God's word or disrespect, disrespect me, my words are block and defeat. Amen. <laughs> I got power. And we need to block and delete in our lives. Amen. Understand that, yes, yeah, sometimes you have to block somebody out. Right. Sometimes you have to delete some people out of your lives. In order to plug into the power. Okay, I'm skipping down. I want to read this final verse. We heard it before Ephesians 3 and 6. Go to it. It says that he will grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his power. His power. Oh, I'm finished now. I'm going spinning. Listen. Let's hand this out for me. Let's hand those to people. I just love little gadgets because they speak volume. I love it. I love going to share me this. <laughs> Because <laughs> we're talking about being plugged into the power, right? When you block out the royal people or the people you should block out, right? Then you're in tune more now with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> we say, and we know that the Holy Spirit, like in Genesis, when God created the heavens and the earth, the Spirit moved, right? over the face of the deep. So it's the Holy Spirit that does the moving. That's what I need you to know. The Holy Spirit does the moving. The Holy Spirit is within you. That's why you pray. That's why you read. And you fast. That's why you meditate. Just think on God. Just so that all that is within you begins to reflect who he is. Right? So, so listen to me. Pay attention. You're reading. You're fasting. You're praying. You're meditating. You got the right attitude. So all this is in you. Now you can live according to greater he is he that is in me. Because you got all the right things in you. By the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a wind. Will you show us first? The Holy Spirit is the wind. You know it, you know it. So when you follow the Holy Spirit, follow the right power, people you can have fun in life. Simple but true, you know, because now, watch this, you can be effective, you can get moving. Yeah. You, I saw this when I went to Hawaii, my husband and I, these, these windmills, oh, yeah. look at the landscape. You can be a power source to empower others. Oh, yeah. 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 Huh? So when you get moving by the Holy Spirit, that which you give out is of the Holy Spirit. So the conclusion of the matter of this workshop is that when you are empowered by the right spirit, by the right power, now you can empower others yeah. yourself. Yeah. And what I like about this, the power is now resident in the preacher, the pastor. It's not resident in those that, yes, you must be under and obey. Uh -uh -uh. We are only distributors. We are channels of blessings so that you can understand this. And by golly gee, that's why I should be no such thing as a grumpy Christian. I got the Holy Ghost. I got power. God has given me life. He's given me the ability to overcome situations and to be more than a conqueror. Golly gee, I think I'm happy. I'm happy about that. And so, women of God, men of God, here's my thing. I want those of you that have the windmills to truly understand. And, and you know what? Carry them at a point so the younger people see. And when you see the younger people, do, do, yeah, do that right there. Just, just blue. And, and then they say, well, she did any old person like you do with the windmill. You can say, I'm having fun by the power of the Holy Ghost. You don't know what you're missing. And then take one out of them to lunch and, and talk to them about how the power got you over. Come on. Yeah. How, how the power got you through. Yeah. How the power caused you to be more than a power. Yeah. Huh? And you, you didn't know of your own how you were making. Mm. 
But God tapped you on the show. And he said, live another day, walk another day, sing another day. That the joy of the Lord is your strength. Church, women, men of God, be encouraged. Plug into the power. The power of God will not fail you. There will be no shortages. There will be no what they had out in California. Shutting down blackouts. There ain't no blackout in the Holy Ghost. There ain't no blackouts in the Holy Ghost. Be grateful that when Jesus left, he said, I'm not going to leave you comfortless. He didn't say, he didn't say I'm going to leave you with me. Jesus, he didn't say, I'm going to leave you with me. God. He said, no, 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 no. I'm going to leave with you the resident that can abide within you. And that's the Holy Ghost. Be encouraged. Be blessed and know that God wants you plugged into him yes. so that you can be a generator yes. of the power of the Holy Spirit. Did you learn something today? Yes. Amen. Be blessed. Yes. God bless you. You are delightful. And I'm glad to have had this opportunity.